Hello everyone, in this video we will cover Al-Qaeda Studio Blockly programming and the use of offline files. For beginners, Blockly is a great choice. It is a fully visualized programming language, and unlike other programming languages that needs to write code, Blockly codes are made up of graphical blocks which are similar to building blocks. You can put them together in a way similar to puzzles to write a program. Compared to teaching programming, in the previous video, Blockly can add variables, realize logic control, and complete more complex tasks. So in this lesson, compared to the last video, we will complete a different task. You can see that we have a row of small wooden blocks in front. If we use the teaching programming in the previous video, we need to control the robot arm to record the points one by one and then put them in the box. But now when we're using Blockly to program, we can use loops with variables to make the programming easier. Let's run it through and see what happens. The end tool we use in this demo is the micro servo gripper. We have removed the suction cup we used in the previous demo and replaced it with the hex wrench. The wire of the gripper is inserted in the position where the air pump was, which is the PWM interface on the top of the box. Once it is connected, follow the operation in the setup video to turn on the power of the arm and return to our software. Select Blockly interface. On this interface, we will create a new file. Before continuing, we need to perform the homing operation first. Then we go to the setting, tool. In the setting, we choose the micro servo gripper. After choosing, we click OK. So now, Let's try to write the same program as we just performed in the beginning of the video. Let's take a look at the software interface first. The Blockly interface is roughly divided into four areas. The top area is a menu bar, which includes New, Open, Save, Save As, Export, and Download. Download is to store it in the extender box, and Export is to export this file as a G-code file to local. This area here is the instruction area. We can see there are many building blocks under each type of instruction. These building blocks can be dragged out and put into our script area. The script area can be zoomed in or out here, or drag it to delete and other operations. The building blocks are assembled in this area to form our program. Here is the code area. While we're completing the program, the corresponding Python code will be generated there in real time. The area below shows the Python code corresponding to the block we currently selected. On the far right, it is the familiar movement control area. So let's write the program now. First, we put the blocks back to where they were, in front of the arm, lined up along the Y direction. This is a more regular arrangement, and we can let the arm grab them one by one in turn. Let's think about how to grab the first block. To first drag out the speed of movement in motion. Generally, the speed of linear interpolation motion needs to be defined. When we use the host computer to perform the homing operation, it will automatically assign us a speed, so we cannot feel it, which is this, F2000. When we download this file to our extender box to execute, if we don't define the motion speed, the linear interpolation command cannot run. Therefore, we must define its speed, and we can choose 2000. After setting the speed, we control the robotic arm to move to the position of the first block. Here we choose the move to building block. So first, change the motion mode to MOVL. We don't need to fill in the following parameters ourselves. 
Just select the chord mode on this side and then control the movement of the arm. We can first increase the step size and lower its height. Then rotate with RZ. Then adjust it to the top of the first block. Now right click on the first block we move to and choose to update coordinates. In this way we can synthesize the coordinate parameters in the action control area to the building block. Now we are going to control the gripper to open. The control commands for the gripper are in parts. We choose gripper and set to on. We can click this building block and choose the one step execution to run it or control the switch in the control area here. We select it to open, and after opening it, we copy this move to the building block, then put it below. And then we move it down to the control area, then right click on the current position to update the current coordinate. Again, copy the control instruction of gripper and select off. We then step run the selected building block. The gripper closes and now the arm has grabbed the block. We are going to move the block into the box. Continue to duplicate the previous move to instruction. This time we choose jump. If we don't choose jump but stay with MOVO, we need to define multiple points to let it lift up and then move to the top of the box with two more additional points. But by selecting jump, we only need one instruction with one starting position and one ending position. It will automatically plan a door-shaped trajectory movement to the target position. And then we control it to move. Increase the Z coordinate first. Then decrease the Y coordinate. Then update the current coordinate. Once we get to this position, we can control the gripper to be open to release the block. Let's try it with this one step execution. Then we bring the arm back over the building blocks. Let's make another duplicate of the previous move to function. Then increase the Y coordinate. and update the current coordinates. In this way, we have done a complete block transportation. Compared with the first wooden block, the following five wooden blocks only have different Y coordinate values. We can use the loop structure to grab the next five blocks. We first put these main actions into the body of the repeated execution loop and then change the number of times to 6 because we have 6 blocks. So in this case, what we need to change is the y-coordinate of the grabbing position. We need to create two variables. First, we can create a variable that controls the y-coordinate, y0. Next, we create a variable to count. After creation, we have two variables here. We need to assign a value to the number variable. How do we assign it? We can see that there is a small gap behind it. This gap is used to connect the building blocks in math. We drag it out first and give it a value of 0 in the beginning. We 
Let's then drag the y0 variable here to be added sequentially from the y value variable of the first building block at the beginning of the execution. We choose math again. Enter negative 40. and duplicate this building block. Please note that we have to nest it into the previous building block like a bracket. We choose the number variable and change the plus to multiply. How much do we multiply? We saw that the side length of each block is 20 millimeters, so we multiply 20. So we can move it back 20 millimeters per count. Then we will replace the y value in the move to commands with our variable y0. Again, let's duplicate this command. After each execution, add one to count. We will change back to plus and plus one. When all six blocks have been moved, we let it return to its original state. So we first turn off the gripper and then find zero position in motion and return the arm to the initial state. So now that we have completed the preparation of this program, let's check it out. As you can see, there's no problem with our program. If you want to, you can stop it to stop button. After this program is written, we can save it to our extender box. Let's first click save. After saving, we click download. The data cable is connected to our extender box, so by clicking download, we upload the program. We enter a name, gripper, and click OK. It will show that the g-code has been saved. Now let's look at the extender box. Press down the file and go to the next level, and we can find the gripper file we just saved. We choose the program and go back to the previous level. Let's put these blocks back. Then we select the program and choose Run to Execute. Now even if we unplug the data cable connected to the computer, it will not affect its operation. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching.